Hello, welcome back to my channel Clear Vision and in today's video we're going to be exploring the intriguing concepts of projection and transference. These psychological phenomena play a significant role in our everyday interactions and relationships. So by understanding them through the lenses of Jungian psychodynamic and also Gestalt perspectives, which I'm going to go into today, we can hopefully gain some valuable insights into our behaviours and improve our relationships. So, have you ever wondered why you sometimes react strongly to certain people or certain situations, or why there are traits in others which bother you so much? Uh, these reactions, as a short answer to this, might be influenced by projection and or transference. Projection is a defense mechanism which was uh, first identified or is a concept which was developed by uh, Carl Jung and in it he said this is where we unconsciously attribute our own undesirable traits, emotions or desires onto somebody else, uh, which helps us avoid facing uncomfortable aspects of ourselves. So this can delve into like the shadow projection stuff where it's like unlived parts of ourselves, we see that in others, or behaviors we don't allow ourselves to um, engage in, which we see other people doing, for instance, or feelings that we're experiencing, which we don't want to allow ourselves to feel. So we, we kind of project them out, we see them in someone else and then, and then they're outside of us. Uh, transference, on the other hand, is a concept which comes from psychodynamic theory. It predates Jung, it's more Freudian. So transference is where we take past emotions, responses, thoughts, reactions to either people, situations, uh, objects such as buildings, places. We take, so what we place onto them in the past, what we experienced with them in the past, we place onto something in our present which reminds us of that thing on the past and often it's unconscious. So it, we, we, it's called the transference. You're transferring how you were towards something in the past onto something how you are in the present. Often it's to do with relationships. Yes, it turns up in a therapy room a lot. Um, and often it's stuff to do with childhood, but we'll, we'll keep it with, it's in the past. This is now, because this has been considered for many, many years as a thing. This is a, a phenomenon which we, do, which we engage in. So it's like seeing the present moment through the lens of the past. You put the filter on it. For example, you might say you had a bad experience in hospitals, so therefore you fear them. And then when you're in a hospital in the present, you smell it, you, you, you see it, it, remind, it unconsciously reminds you of the past and brings everything forward. So now you get hit twice. You, 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 know, you get extra, extra fear weighed on top of it. Or it can be towards people or something. Or even a mannerism someone might do is enough to trigger transference. Uh, you know, a, a mannerism and it's like, holy shit, that's just like what my mother did. So you may well put a filter on someone's mannerism and misinterpret how they're behaving, thinking, or feeling because you add the extra weight on from the past. So that's transference. So the Jungian view, going back to projection, Jung saw projection as a natural part of the individuation process. I'll maybe do another video on that. The individuation process is like self-actualization, the merging of opposites, opposing aspects of psyche. This is like moving towards enlightenment and nirvana, if you like, in a Buddhist kind of way. And Jung rolled all of this into his you know, personal growth, this is what you're aiming for. According to Jung, we project our shadow often, uh, the parts of our personality that we deny or ignore, and we project this onto others. And this projection helps us recognize and integrate these shadow aspects into our conscious self. Now, this can have an impact on our relationships. So in relationships, this might mean that we see traits in our partners that actually reflect our own unresolved issues. And I have done a video, I'll put it up here, on shadow projections within relationships. But basically, if you recognize and own your projections, these become your tools, this is crucial for personal growth and to have healthier rela relationships. So to recognize that you're projecting. When it comes to transference, and I'm gonna go with Freud here, who's often relegated to the history section of libraries, but there's a lot of stuff he said which is still relevant today. There's a lot of stuff which has been discredited and discarded, fine. But there is some stuff which has actually gained more prominence. So he first introduced the concept of transference where he noticed that clients, patients, would transfer feelings for significant figures uh, f uh, f from their past 
uh, onto uh, their therapist effectively and he noticed this phenomena so uh, like you know you might start treating by reacting to your therapist as if they were your father or your mother or whatever and in whatever context or dynamic that might be and so Freud used this as an exploration for hidden emotions and unresolved conflicts to surface and then work with it as well uh, so to realize so if you're a therapist out there or training you might come across this concept that you know if you're client starts to idolize you or hate you or whatever then it's possibly a clue as to something that's unresolved for them from the past which they're playing out within the therapy room the thing with transference is we play this out in our everyday life so it can occur outside of the therapy room and we might unconsciously transfer feelings from our let's say parents onto our partners or authority figures maybe someone reminds you of a teacher you hated who was particularly persecutor of you or something and someone else reminds you of them and you start behaving towards them with like some maybe some kind of hatred or passive aggression or something like that or fear even um, and it's kind of unrealistic it's not based on reality may they may be similar to them or have a mannerism similar which is enough to trigger the past and bring it forward but you haven't quite recognized you've transferred it over. And what this can do is it creates uh, repetitive patterns in relationships where we react based on our past experiences rather than present reality. And often we're reacting to someone in our present, but we're reacting to them as if they were someone in our past. But again, it's unconscious. If I move, uh, if I may, and I know I go off at lots of tangents, if I move to Gestalt therapy, and I'm talking about Gestalt, Gestalt therapy um, as opposed to the, con the Gestalt uh, psychology. There are two slightly different things. But I'm talking about the therapy, therapeutic approach, which was founded by Fritz Perls. And he, in it, he emphasizes the awareness uh, and the here and now experience. So having awareness, bringing that which was out of awareness into awareness and having a here and now experience in the present moment which encourages us to recognize and take responsibility for all of our projections. And in the Gestalt approach, clients are guided to become aware of how they project their own feelings and beliefs onto others. So it's, it's, it's another, I often use the kaleidoscope metaphor, it's another turn of the kaleidoscope, you know, turn it once, you get a psychodynamic approach, turn it again, you get the Jungian kind of viewpoint, turn it again, you get Gestalt, again, you get something else. But the, the, the beads, the jewels at the bottom of the um, kaleidoscope, your life experience they're representing, it's just another viewpoint on your behaviors, your uh, emotions and your reactions to things to give you, help give you further insight. So according to Pearls, by becoming aware of these projections, we can better understand our internal conflicts and now how they might influence our interactions. So again, now this is bringing it into ourselves rather than it's less external, like seeing it external and like Jung's kind of approach is it's, it's external, it, it needs to come back in. Uh, Gestalt is kind of going, this is an internal conflict. Um, and you need to see, you need to recognize this in order to realize the internal conflict and how this is influencing your interactions with the world around you. So this awareness, he says, helps us integrate disowned parts of ourselves and foster more authentic relationships. Again, it's like a reference towards the shadow. It's stuff we have relegated, we don't want to know about ourselves. So again, it's just another turn of that kaleidoscope, another viewpoint. In everyday life, projection and transference often manifests in various ways. And you may well notice um, projecting your insecurities, uh, let's say for instance, onto a colleague, uh, seeing them as overly critical when actually what they said wasn't critical or was in fact just general feedback. What you could say is that you've either, there's a transference there for someone from the past onto them, you know, so you, everything you hear from them is critical and it's actually it's not or it's a projection of your own critical viewpoint of yourself, which is more of a Jungian take and a Gestalt take, which would denote an internal conflict or something you've relegated. You devalue yourself and you hear someone devaluing you when in fact they're not. You may find yourself perhaps, uh, if you're in a romantic relationship, treating them, this happens a lot, as if they were a parent and reacting to them with emotions that are tied in with your childhood experience. And again, I've done numerous videos on this. Transactional analysis is another one, you know, they're looking at the ego states, parent, adult, child, 
child to parent states, judgmental, being a judgmental partner, somehow morphing into the judgmental parent or acting like a child in the relationship, wanting to be rescued, wanting to be saved. I mean, these are all different viewpoints. And again, for the purposes of this video, this is like a projection, okay? Or a transference or both. Uh, could we say it's all both? Transference? Yeah, I guess it's both. Yeah, it can be both. Yeah, because they are slightly different things. Sorry, just thinking aloud. Uh, <laughs> so uh, these mechanisms uh, can significantly impact our relationships. So like, a, you, like I said, the parent-child kind of relationship within a romantic relationship just doesn't work. You, you know, you're judgmental of me. I'm going to act like a child. Uh, I'm going to be perhaps defiant against everything you say. You may project fears or anger onto a partner that can lead to misunderstandings and then conflicts. Or, and, and, and again, these projections or this transference can cause us to respond to partners based on, uh, or more so, this is more so with transference, which would cause you to be, react to your partner based on old wounds from the past from someone else, which prevents you actually from seeing your partner as they truly are. So if you had a very, very critical parent who devalued you and never gave you any encouragement or any praise and your partner says something which is maybe like, um, it's critical, but it's, it's done in a caring way. Like, you know, hey, um, I don't know, have you thought about changing up the way you are? Um, you know, changing a certain behavior. And you hear it as this massive criticism and then boom, you know, you're off and you're ranting and you're raving and you're kicking against them. And it, it, this could be a, a sign of a projection or a transference. Moving forward from that and how we kind of recognize it and uh, work with it, maybe pull it back in, uh, is the first step is, is to address the projection or the transference. And the way to do that is by noticing it, which is easier said than done, uh, you may get some feedback on it. Notice how you're reacting to certain things. Am I, you know, do a reality check? Was I being irrational there? Was I overreacting? Do I view them as someone? Do they remind me of someone from the past? This is that that moment of awareness that you, this is happening. And then there's the self-reflection that comes with it. So pay attention to your emotional reactions and consider whether or not they might be projections or a transference and ask yourself, is this really about the other person or is it more about me? It's like that classic line, if you take a strong dislike to someone that you don't know, or maybe you do know, but a really, really strong dislike to them and their behavior, let's say they act quite big and boastful and all the rest of it, it probably says more about you than it does about them. And I've said this before in videos about projection. So if you were always told to be, um, keep yourself small as a, when you were a child, you know, keep yourself small, don't boast, don't have an ego, don't do this, don't, don't dream big, don't think big, don't be loud in the room. And you see someone else behaving that way. And you've kind of like suppressed this aspect of self all of these years. And there's someone, you know, blazantly, belligerently being, you know, kind of like flamboyant and brash and boastful and all the rest of it. And you're like, I really hate that person. I really dislike them, but I don't really know them. That's the moment when you kind of go, well, okay, this is something to do with me, not to do with them. So it's, it's noticing those moments and the same with partners, um, friends, work colleagues. Some ways around this, again, you could go to a therapist, you can work through stuff like this in therapy or with yourself. You can use mindfulness and grounding practices, uh, which can help you to stay present and aware of your feelings. You could do the breathing exercises. You could take a pause, like in a couple of other videos I've got on taking a step back for a moment, 15 minutes, three seconds, whatever works for you, and focusing on the present moment, bringing yourself into the moment, doing a reality check, is this what I is it is this worthy of me reacting this way? Is something else going on here for me, which is actually nothing to do with the other person, and therefore I'm putting a filter over the situation. Um, this will greatly, if you could do this and you find ways to do this, and you can explore your projections and transferences, it reduces the intensity of of them of the projections and transferences. Um, and like I said, seeking therapy can be really really beneficial. Working through it with someone and giving these things an expression, 
You could do regular journaling to help track your emotional reactions and identify patterns of projection and transference. You can write down your thoughts and your feelings, which then allows you to reflect on them um, more objectively. So you could take a situation, write about it, come back to it, and kind of go, well, actually, what was really going on there? And you can kind of communicate openly with your partner as well, um, if it's going on with them about your feelings and your experiences and having these honest discussions with, with friends, partners, whatever, work colleagues can really help clear up misunderstandings and build mutual understandings. So it's like, you can communicate, hey, you know when you do this, and I'm not asking you to change, but when you're doing this, it's really, I've noticed it's really pulling something out of me and I'm trying to work through what it actually is. And uh, you know, I, I'm, you can own it as well. I, I apologize for my reactions to you. They're, they're really strong, they're really extreme, but. I don't know what's going on here and I'm busy exploring it. And it's enough, you know, it's enough to say that. And hopefully if they are mature and understanding and care for you, it can actually build, strengthen the bond. You know, it's this growth together, you know. So um, as a friendship or as a work colleague might be a bit more difficult, but it might help reduce some stress and tension and anxiety within the workplace. But, uh, and within a romantic relationship, but yeah, of course it helps, you know, reduce conflicts and you're owning something and you're sharing something that's quite vulnerable about yourself that you need to work on. And hopefully your partner is um, of the same kind of principles and values and will help you work through it, not rescue you from it, not change their behaviors to prevent you being like that, but actually help you work through your projections of unlived parts of self things you don't like about yourself um, or some of your transferences. You can also practice, uh, obviously, uh, as always, some self-compassion. I say as always, like I'm devaluing it. I'm not, uh, you know, self-compassion. Recognize that your projection and transference, uh, is, it's a common phenomena, it's a common human experience. And it is part of the journey towards uh, self-awareness. So be gentle with yourself, be kind to yourself compassionate as you work through these dynamics because these are difficult dynamics to work through you know if you are je if you find yourself acting really jealously to someone whose life's moving forward because they put themselves in the spotlight and you daren't put yourself in the spotlight you know that's that's kind of something to look at but that's also something quite profound to admit to yourself you know like oh okay like i'm actually jealous of this person because i'm feeling inadequate around them they're they're a mirror for my reluctance to step forward or my lack of self-confidence to step forward uh, into that arena as such and and so therefore they're doing it and I'm hating them for it you know now I've got to kind of own it and work on it and and Jung would say like you know you pull the projection back into you and I think uh I'll come back to that when it comes to the transference transference is about recognizing it and then recognizing this other person is not that person from the past. This hospital is not that hospital. This situation in the hospital is not that situation in the hospital, for example, you know. Uh, this playground is not that playground. Whatever it might be, this house is not that house, you know. So this holiday is not that holiday. It's recognizing that the future or the present does not necessarily mirror the past or, a, or, or is a repeat. That's recognizing transferences that Freud also said, I think there are no transferences without hooks. There will be something in it, a smell, a color, a mannerism of someone that hooks into that transference into you, whoosh, like that, pulls you. And that's when you notice it. And that's when you have to do that reality check and work on it and notice that actually it may well be changing the way you interact with the world. So coming back to projections, Jung would say, you know, and I've done this in the relationship one on projection, the video, which should be up there, if I've done my video right. Um, so he would say, you know, to if you projected out the, the knight in shining armor, you know, um, so you're looking for a rescuer all the time, or, or you're projecting out the, I don't know, the wise sage onto a friend, you know, they're, they're the wise sage, they're the wise sage. Jung would say, well, you've got the wise sage inside of you, you just haven't recognized it yet, you've pushed it into the shadow and you're projecting it out onto somebody else. Now, the best way to work towards self-individuation and self-actualization, to becoming more self-regulated, and Gestalt goes the same way with it, is to pull that projection back in. It's part of you. Like the Gestalt thing said, you know, it's a separate part of your psyche. You've separated it off. It's a fragmented aspect of psyche that you're projecting out. Jung says very, very similar thing. This is, instead of fragmenting it out, you've pushed it into the shadow for you and he, you know, he referred to it some way different, but they both say the same thing, to pull it back in, to 
But what's the opposite of refragment? Integrate. That's the word. Integrate it back into the psyche. And the same with the, you know, the union sense of projection. Bring it back in. Realize you're your own wise sage. That's within you. You're your own knight in shining armor. You're your own, you're your own damsel in distress as well at the same time. And all of these aspects are within you. They've just been relegated to the shadow and you're projecting them out. So if you pull them back in, you'll no longer be expecting your friend to be the wise sage, which they can fall down from, you know, setting them up to fail. The same as a partner, expecting them to rescue all the time. They're going to fall down, they're going to fail because they're only human. And they don't know exactly what such a mammoth weight you're putting on them. You know, they don't realize. So, uh, and if you're both projecting, I mean, it'll work for a long while and then it'll fall apart. So it's, it's, a, it's best to, as Jung said, you know, to integrate these back in to integrate that fragmented aspect of psyche back in that aspect of the shadow, back into the self, back into the ego, if you like, the whole of you, of your psyche. Integrate it back in, it's part of you, and once you've integrated it back in, you'll stop projecting it out, is the idea. You'll stop looking for it in other people, you'll stop hating other people for the reasons that you hate yourself effectively. It's a harsh way to put it, but it can be a way to put it. And that's the way forward. And like I said, you do it with the, the writing, maybe seeing a therapist, exploring it, creative expression, journaling. Oh, I've already said that, writing. Uh, being compassionate, mindfulness, meditation, taking that step back, seeing something in awareness. And then, okay, what's going on here? You know, that, what is it? Check yourself before you wreck yourself kind of thing if you're into hip hop uh, or old hip hop anyway. But that's where I was going to go in with it um, or where they're going with it. I think I've said enough. So I hope that helps. Um, it's an overview of projection and transference. I will maybe do another video and take things a bit deeper. And until I see you again next time, please take really good care of yourselves. Adios.